Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date's February the 13th, 2019, one day before Valentine's Day. And I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you had a great trading day, traded green. So definitely we're going to talk about several different tickers today. Uh, one of them that was extremely exciting is uh, we're going to talk about Solo. We're going to talk about GE. IPI. We're going to give an update on Sears, SHLDQ, and we're going to talk about Coca-Cola because they have their earnings tomorrow. So let's start solo. So Lomeo, as you guys know, S-O-L-O, -O, um, just so you know, we, we've talked about this stuff before. Uh, this is apparently, you know, the Canadian version of Tesla. It's a 15000 Five hundred dollar electric three wheeler. I think Jim can show you guys the actual car. Yep. Um, but this company is in talks to manufacture it at their at GM's Oshawa plant, and apparently the firm is going to be making seventy five thousand electric cars for the West Coast. And um, this is priced at such a good deal that they apparently have a backlog of orders of about 2.4 billion dollars like this is just crazy um so i did notice that the stock earlier in the day was moving now one of our uh, members tommy i mean he actually alerted the stock for a swing trade earlier in the week because he liked what he liked the chart um i liked the uh, stock today too and i did notice that it ran all the way to 244 and I had missed the move, but then when I saw it pull back on a reversal at 217, I alerted this to the room and I actually had said, you know, this is a reversal play. And I was looking for the stock to actually go back towards like the 230 zone. And I stepped away to get some water. And when I came back, I was shocked. The stock went all the way to like 245 and there was a lot of volume coming in out of nowhere. So it, has amazed me the stock because I wasn't actually expecting this to reverse the way that it did and this stock is just on fire and uh, it went all the way to where'd it go Jim 460 yep I think all, all the way to 460 and uh, even now in after hours um, 468 you know, 468 so there you go so, you know, some people always make little comments. I mean, even me, I like to be cautious, like, want to make sure there's no offering, be careful. And and you know what? The, just, the volume's just nonstop on this. So congratulations to the people in the room that got, took the trade, made money. Um, I did not swing in the trade. I don't care if it keeps going. I will find something else to trade. Sometimes when I see too much action going on, uh, there's always that in the back of your mind. Could there be an offering? Could there be an offering? We don't know. We don't think there will be one, but we don't know where there could be one. No one knows. Uh, so it's the risk people do take, and uh, that is obviously a risk. Anyhow, so far it's running beautifully. I'm just going to turn it right over to Jim to talk about the chart and um, give us an outlook on what we're seeing on Solo. Yep. So I'm going to pull up the year's chart on Solo. We had a $10, year, $10 high, which is a pretty good resistance right here, right around 989 We've had some gap downs on this, some huge gap downs. The last one went to 650, and the one before that dropped all the way down here to 384. And then she went to a year low at 90 cents a couple months ago. And then we had this little turnaround up to resistance level at 156. And then she pulled back again. And then today was a huge breakout on this stock. And you know, this is the year's chart. We bounced above the uh, 50 SMA. We bounced above the 100 SMA, and we run over the 200 SMA. So I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart just to get a little gander at it. Not much. I mean, it's been pretty flat down here. Had a low of 118, and then today was the day of the big breakout. I mean, before today, if we'd looked at this, we wouldn't have been too interested in the stock at all. But now, they also had news today, and that was... Um, bringing i think that was one of the catalysts that it had and uh it's just very impressive i mean this thing jumped all the way from 157 on a breakout and here we are after hours at 479 you can see the tape 
I'm going to pull this back and we'll pull this up to a one day now and show you the one day chart. It was called out pre market in the room. It started showing a really good bounce that ran all the way up to two bucks and then pulled back right here at the 100 SMA right at open and then followed that 50 and that 100 pretty tight, pretty tight little grist here. So you didn't really know if it was going to hold or not, but there was many times to get in and out of the trade and we pulled back again to that 50 right here, kind of showed a little negative uh, resistance there and run into that 100. And then finally, it just started breaking up all day long. This thing was surprising. It had a little channel here at 275 to 293. And I was even crying out in the room, maybe set some stops. So, you know, it was a trade that was in and out, in and out all day long. And then here at the end of the day, this is a low float stock of 10.75 million. That was another catalyst that helped this run. And even after hours, we're still climbing up on it. It's, it hit a high of 486. So these are small little block trades. That's something else I noticed about this. There wasn't really a lot of big fat cats getting in this trade at all. And then closer to the end of the day, I started noticing that there were some bigger blocks coming into it, but not huge. And this thing's bouncing up pretty fast, just, you know, on 50, 50 shares at a time, 40 shares at a time, 100 shares at a time. So here we are. We hit a new high at 488. You're going to have a pullback support on this baby right around 452, maybe 431. And if them two don't hold, I see another little support right around 4 bucks. And I'm going to pull up this year's chart again. I've got a couple long resistances on this. This stock's got me amazed also. So, you know, I'm kind of, and I'm usually not like this about a stock. Not at all. But we did hit this 452 level right here. And the next resistance of, if, is a big gap to 551. I mean, we could actually wake up in the morning and see this thing at 551. So I'm definitely going to keep this on a close watch tomorrow. Probably dream about it tonight. Wondering why I didn't stick in it. I scalped it for just a measly 100 bucks, And and I could have probably walked away with a good, I mean, a pretty good chunk of change. And this is Solo. And I showed you that little website and that little car there. It's a one-seater. So, and the next one we're going to talk about is GE. Yes, yeah, so GE. I mean, you know, I've been watching the stock, watching the volume, loving the action. And uh, what I like about it is it really just hasn't hit this resistance here of $10.50. Um, I still like GE very much uh, for, simply for the fact that the volume's just amazing. I mean, incredible volume today. 97.76 million shares today. Um, the stock opened up uh, just shy of $10. It opened up at nine ninety eight this morning and uh, currently trading... Uh, right now, after hours, around ten dollars and thirty-four cents, went as high as ten forty-two. Uh, still looking, definitely for a continuation here, um, and definitely, I know some people did swing trade this stock earlier today and holding just until tomorrow, and hopefully close it off with a nice profit. Uh, so that's what we're all about: is trying to, to make money and uh, on to the next trade. You know, we don't want to marry these stocks. And uh, Jim knows, uh, big fan of GE. And uh, let's hear what you got to say about GE. Yep, we ran this up last week to about 1091. I had a, a, a resistance at 1050, 10, between 1048 and 1056 was my resistance channel. And it did break past that, and I called out the 1077, and we run up and hit that one there. So we've had a three-day sell-off on this thing where it touched down here at the 200 SMA at a low Oh, right around 9.54. And then the past three days, she's bounced back up. She bounced up and hit that, that 50 SMA and followed it for a while. And then we had another little breakout to my resistance level, which I have one here at, at 48. 10.48 is my hard target on the stock. But we've seen some on the tape today, there were some huge blocks coming in. 7 million here, 100,000 there. So... This is one that we're going to keep on watch. I have a hard resistance at 1077. That's what it needs to break. We did have a 1091 high on a 20-day chart. This can pull back a little bit. Um, I, love, I love the $10 area. 
right around here, around 1014. If it wanted to go pull back today or tomorrow, could pull back to this moving average right here. So I'm going to pull up the daily, just show you what kind of run we did have today on this stock. And I've been calling it right around 995 to 1003 for an entry level before when before we got into this last big run. And now she's pulled up to this 1042 and she's pulling back after hours. Right now we're at 1034. I think this stock can probably pull back down to about 1030 for a support level. If not, you're going to see the 1024. And I'm using these extended trend lines. I haven't added nothing to this chart today but that 1030. You can see how we bounced up and pulled back. So that's going to be a little support level. Maybe to look at it to get in tomorrow at 1030. If that don't hold, we're going to pull back to that 1014 area. We have 1024 and 1014. But I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% bullish on it, but I am bullish on it. And, and I was more convinced after seeing the buys come in. I think them trades were coming in right around 1037. Right around this area, right before close, right around $10.37, those big blocks. So people are investing in this company right now. And this is GE, and the next one we're going to talk about is IPI. Okay, so IPI. Uh, this stock here, I was actually looking at it this morning as well. And what actually is that I noticed that there was some volume coming in on the stock. And when I looked at it in the morning, you know, it was around the 330 zone. And, you know, I was just w waiting to see, you know, where was the stock going to be heading before I would want to, you know, take an actual position in the stock. And I like to try to make sure that when I take an entry on the stock, that it's actually going to have some sort of movement. I don't want to necessarily be in a stock and I'm waiting all day when I could be trading other stocks that are going to move. So I gave the trade idea on this one at $3.45. My target on this was 367 to 369, which would have been the 200 day, which we did make. And the if we broke that, I wanted to see it go to 378. And I'm happy to say we're at 375. So good job on the day traders. I believe there were a few that might have swung this overnight. So congrats to them, and I'm um, still waiting to see that 378 and maybe potential for more, but there will be some resistance there. And I'll let Jim talk all about that. All right. Um, I'm going to pull up the year's chart on it. We did have a nice little breakout today on this stock here at 323. There it looks like it right around open. And this is my yearly chart. We busted, we got the 50 day curling up. We broke past the 100 and the 200 SMA. This is pretty much, I think, Vegas and I've talked about this stock before. I had a, uh, a pivot point or maybe a support level, little pivot point channel on this stock between 378 and 395. And then I've also charted it up here for some more extra resistance lines. So if we can get up to that 378, it'd be nice to run into 395. 406 and then 420 and if we can get that 420 we got another resistance level right around 434 i see in that right there pretty 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 close so i'm going to pull this up to a day for a 20 day just have a look at a 20 day we've had some up and downs but it's been on a gradual upward swing with a resistance level right here that we had to break at 429 which we did today and then we run all the way up to this 375 at close area, 373, so we're up a couple pennies after hours. We're going to break past that 378. And this is going to be IPI, and I'm going to pull up that one-year chart one more time so you can take and jot this down or screenshot it, screen, you know, um, take a snap of it. 395, after we break that 378, 406, 420, and 434 and you're willing to keep this chart for yourself and this last one is going to be our week play of the week that we called last thursday and that is sears okay so sears was one that you know we called last week because of the news that the chairman of the board was taking over the um actual company and obviously we're saving all these jobs and, you know, it had a nice run to date, went all the way down. I mean, if you listen to the aftermarket report, uh, it you know, we said it was good for continuation for the next day. 
And, you know, it opened up at $1.92. I mean, it ran as high as two seventy seven. So I think that would have been a great day trade. But, you know, obviously, like we've talked before, guys, like the stocks can run and then they're going to pull back. Like it's not going to keep running and running and running. And here's an example where Sears ran to two seventy seven, and it actually pulled back down uh, all the way towards like the 169, 170 zone. And I believe that Jim was looking at a low support there. I think it was uh, 150 or 123. It was right around. But I'll let him talk about that because I'm still going to keep watching the stock because there's an opportunity for this to reverse. Yep. And last night, after our, when we talked about this last night, it closed right around this 185 area. So we did have another beautiful breakout on this stock again, 185 to 277. That's more than 90 cent bounce. And then, you know, we were talking about it in the room and then started gradually showing this descending flag pattern. You can see what a descending flag is. It kind of has a little bottom here where it, and then it, it, it the trend line moves downward. So I seen the, the sell off coming and I did mention it in the room to be careful and go ahead and take, we always say take your profit on a big breakout because you will have another chance to get back in it always 100% of the time. And so she did have a nice little sell-off into close. I had a little support level here at 150. We closed at that 175 yesterday, somewhere around that area right here. And I said it would pull back maybe to 150, but instead it went, it went north. But at the end of the day, she pulled back to that entry level that we had, that, that yesterday's close and a little lower after hours at 169. We come real close to hitting that 150. Into close, I mean, right before the end of the day, which was at 157. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up. And well, I've got three different support levels on this stock. I've got 91. I've got a little spot right in here, right around 128, 129. And then I have the 150. And then the 175. So let me pull up the daily. It's getting pretty fogged up because we've been following this thing for a week. And I might have to clear out my chart. But this is a good example um, of when a stock runs up like this, I mean, just beautifully. This is number day four that we called it out from 75 cents. It ran all the way to 277, so that's a $2 bounce in four days. And we were very excited about this stock because of the news it did have. And today was a good example of how it pulled back. And I did the same thing with shrimp. And I also played the same thing with BCCI. They both had wonderful runs. And there's going to be a time where you have to figure out where it's going to have the pullback. Because people are going to take profit. And so here we are at 169. We might get down to 155 again. But this thing can run back down to even down here to 129. So this is going to be a scalper play from here on out. And we're just going to have to see what kind of action we have on it tomorrow. Time will tell. But we did call the run, and we did call the resistance levels. I was expecting a little pullback yet today, but instead it just reversed and went up. And that was a beautiful sight to see. And the last one we're going to say is something that's that a lot of people drink, and that's Coca-Cola. Yeah, so I just wanted to bring up Coca-Cola because uh, tomorrow morning, Coca-Cola is going to report their earnings. And uh, as a result of Coca-Cola uh, reporting the earnings, I mean, the stock is, you know, just shy of $50. It's like $49.85. And, you know, to really make good money on the stock, I mean, you'd have to buy quite a lot of shares. So, you know, the other, the other way to actually try to make money on this is to just buy an option call. So I bought an option call for the strike price. It expires on March 1st. So I actually have some time to sell my option call in the event that Coca-Cola beats earnings and beats Wall Street expectation. Um, I actually paid for the $50 call uh, 65 cents, which is $65. And I guess I'll know tomorrow if I've made money on that or if I lose my $65. So this is a thing for earnings. I mean, similar to buying stocks and playing them into earnings, you have a chance of obviously taking losses and same thing with the option. I have a chance that the earnings don't do well. And you know what? My option money that I put in, which is $65 in this case, 
um, I lose it all or I lose half. Um, so it really is uh, dependent on the outcome of the earnings report. And uh, I guess I'm excited to wake up tomorrow and see what the actual news will be. So I'll let you guys know about Coca-Cola tomorrow, um, how it goes in terms of the option. And I'll give you guys an update in the video. So, Jim, can you uh, share the chart, though? Because I'd like to get your perspective on uh, the actual outlook on the chart. Yeah, this is the first time I've ever charted Coca-Cola, ever. And I just did it while she was talking. It didn't take me very long. And I like to play in. I like to play earnings, especially if it's after the bell, not much before the bell. I have a lot better odds of winning after the bell. So we, we're up here. We're we're climbing into a resistance level. Right now, here at around fifty dollars. We did touch that today. We got a couple other places we could run it up to, and that would be fifty seventeen. And then we got a little fifty thirty eight. With a yearly high of 5084, and I'm going to put that right in there so I can remember that tomorrow. And um, so, you know, basically, I guess another one that time will tell when earnings come. I, I'm not much of a soda pop drinker, but I know a lot of Americans do love their soda pop. And let me pull up a 20-day chart here. We'll get a little bit better look at it. So if the earnings come out and the forecasts are good, we can probably bounce up to those resistance levels. And if, if they're not so good, we can maybe pull back to this 48.28 at a very low, low, low. And that's just about $1.60 and that thing can bounce right back up. So I want to hear good guidance and I want to hear good earnings. And I want Miss Vegas to make some good money on her little $60 option call. And I am impressed. She has been doing very well in her option calls. And I'm just beginning this year, and that's my goal, is to become a better option call trader. And so this is going to be KO, not knockout, but Coca-Cola. And that's going to wrap it up for our aftermarket report. And I just want to repeat this one more time. We've got little support levels. You're welcome to go ahead and freeze the screens and use these channels as support maybe and see how accurate I am on these charts. Okay, Miss Vegas. Yeah, so, I mean, it was a good gripping. I mean, it's at 560. I'm like, my gosh, this stock's just just crazy. And, uh, you know, the SPY, I just want to talk about the SPY quickly. I mean, the SPY has had an interesting day. It seems that this 275, we keep toggling just shy above 275, and then we pull back below the 275. So, I don't know, 275 seems to be that uh, line where there's always a little bit of a battle to continue going higher or the pullback. So we'll see what happens uh, with the SPY tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow also, I want to wish everyone an amazing Valentine's Day. I love everybody that listens and subscribes and follows. I love all your comments. I did mention how I always respond. Jim responds. And I love reading this, these uh, comments that you guys take the time to make. I so appreciate it. And I hope that maybe tomorrow, um, if possible, we might actually do a live YouTube broadcast tomorrow uh, to everyone. So stay tuned for that. If you do subscribe and follow and you're not in our chat, that's fine. Um, but subscribe and you'll get the notification if we go live on the air tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. And that's it for me, but I hope everyone has an amazing Valentine's Day. And uh, at least you guys know that we love you guys. And uh, we appreciate everyone's support. And uh, I hope everyone has an amazing day tomorrow. And thank you so much. Jim, any last words to say to the fans? Oh, yes. Um, Vegas and I have been trading for two years together. And we opened up our own little chat room now on Discord. It's called I Love Stocks. You can follow the link down below. It's, it, you have to download a Discord app, and then you go right into our room, and we offer a two-week free trial, or at least we're going to start billing at the beginning of every month. And we just want you to come in and experience some good traders. We've surrounded with some good traders, and I really am liking this room, not just because it's mine, but it's just because I think we have a good following, and a lot of people followed us into the room, and, and 
and everybody's happy. We're 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 making money. We're making these good calls. We're we 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 try to help the people that are that are having issues or having a hard time trading, not quite figuring it out. And we get a lot of good responses um, by doing this. And we've turned a lot of people's around, a lot of people's hearts around when it comes to not giving up and giving it one more chance. And so this is the aftermarket report. We sure do appreciate our patrons. And today's date is February the 13th, 2019. And I love stocks. <laughs>